Before we can talk about type 1 hypersensitivity reactions, so recognizing allergens and uh, causing inflammation due to those allergens, uh, we have to talk about the normal immune response that IgE is used to recognize and attack. And uh, IgE is an antibody isotype that is used to recognize and attack parasites. So these are large multicellular organisms. So they can exist in their different versions of parasites. Uh, sometimes they're referred to generally as helminths. And when you think of these uh, parasites, you know, these are not viruses or bacteria, right? Bacteria are single-celled organisms. Viruses are uh, particles of genetic material encapsulated in proteins and lipids. Uh, these are living, large, multicellular organisms that can um, attach themselves and live in many different areas of the body. So examples of parasitic worms are things like flatworms, hookworms, pinworms, roundworms, tapeworms, flukes, and they can live in many different places in your body. Many of your tubes, your uh, gastrointestinal system, your reproductive system, your respiratory system. Um, they can get into your skin and they can get into your um, bloodstream. So we need a defense mechanism to recognize uh, these large organisms and to be able to remove them from the body. So the immune system, uh, we have a lot, a lot of different uh, defenses, a lot of different ways to recognize a, a pathogen and try to remove the pathogen. We've, we've covered a lot of different uh, immune system weapons in this course. We've talked about phagocytes, such as macrophages and neutrophils and dendritic cells. Um, phagocytes aren't going to be able to uh, digest an entire parasite, right? Macrophages and neutrophils can take in single-celled organisms, such as bacteria. They can take in virus particles, but they cannot take in this entire parasite. Um, what about antibodies? Well, there are many different antibody isotypes, for example, IgM and IgG, uh, but we know those, when they bind pathogens, they can either trigger complement activation or can trigger opsonization. Again, not going to be helpful here. Complement can um, maybe cause inflammation and trigger the membrane attack complex, but that kills individual cells at a time. We need to kill this entire organism and get it out of the body. So uh, what we need are two things. We need toxins that can kill organisms. Uh, and there are cells in our bodies, um, specifically uh, mast cells, eosinophils, and basophils that have uh, lytic, uh, that have, I'm sorry, not lytic granules, have granules. They are granulocytes. They are, and in these granules are toxins that can harm multicellular organisms. They can harm us they can harm these organisms as well. So we're going to see that we need to unleash the power of granulocytes in order to kill these parasites. Um, it would also be helpful if we can flush these organisms out of our body. So with viruses and bacteria, we covered IgA antibody isotype. That will help neutralize a pathogen. So a virus and bacteria won't attach to our cells and we can flush it out of our system. Parasites much bigger uh, so we need much more forceful mechanisms to physically eject the parasite from the body. So we're talking about uh, squeezing it out of the tubes that the parasite might be in. So when you think about coughing and sneezing, um, vomiting and diarrhea, these are uh, mechanisms, they are immune system mechanisms to flush something out of our body. Um, itching might be trying to get a worm out, the mucus might help flush um, the parasite out. So um, all of these are normal responses to parasitic infections, but we're going to see um, can also trigger, uh, be triggered during allergic reactions. So again, let's focus just on the normal uh, mechanisms for ridding the body of parasites. So what does this involve? Well, um, this involves uh, starting with naive B cells, uh, having a B cell receptor that has undergone VDJ recombination so that maybe it recognizes some antigen uh, emitted by this 
parasite. So the parasite could be shedding some proteins or some cells, some dead cells from the parasite get flushed into lymphatic tissue and a, bite, a B cell, hopefully, if we want to combat this uh, parasite, uh, hopefully we make a B cell that has a B cell receptor with antigen binding site that binds uh, molecules on this pathogen. If that's the case, we can unleash an IgE-mediated attack to try to get rid of this pathogen. So uh, naive B cells are going to be involved here, recognizing a pathogen. Uh, of course, to activate a naive B cell and to make it undergo isotype switching, we're going to need the help of a CD4 T cell with its T cell receptor. So we're going to involve a dendritic cell, also maybe taking in some tiny bits and pieces, some molecules of this parasite. Again, it's not killing the parasite, but it's maybe taking in some cells that it's shedding or some proteins that it's shedding and presenting an MHG class 2 molecules to a T cell receptor. And if we happen to make a T cell receptor that recognizes that peptide, then that this T cell could help this naive B cell undergo isotype switching. Um, the uh, IgE response uh, seems to require the cytokine IL-4. So when we talk about the different types of effector T cells, we know that some um, CD4 T cells can differentiate into many different types of T cells, Th1, Th2, Th17, TFH. So IL-4 seems to be a key cytokine to direct a CD4 T cell to um, differentiate into a Th2 uh, helper T cell. And this is critical for signaling to naive B cells to undergo isotype switching to IgE. So the uh, IL-4 cytokine uh, made by other cells, possibly basophil recognizing an infection, um, triggers a Th2 response, and that cell will also release IL-4, which will trigger isotype switching to make IgE. Now that we have IgE, that can be used to combat a parasite by triggering the activation of mast cells basophils, and eosinophils. These are granulocytes that use IgE to recognize a pathogen. And when they recognize a pathogen, um, these cells, which can also be stimulated by cytokines, and we'll see, we'll talk about that as well um, in later videos, these three cell types will unleash toxins onto the pathogen, onto this parasite, and they will also unleash inflammatory molecules that will trigger um, all of these um, processes of um, coughing, sneezing, vomiting, diarrhea, um, contraction, swelling, flushing um, molecules or parasites out of the body. Um, all of these cells, mast cells, basophils, and eosinophils, can trigger this massive physical response to try to eject the pathogen to flush it out of the body. So. Why are we talking about this now in um, the chapter that talks about hypersensitivity reactions? Well, this is the normal process by which the body uses IgE to eliminate pathogens. Uh, we'll see that in individuals who have hyper hypersensitivity type 1 reactions, they uh, unfortunately make IgE against allergens. And these same uh, effector mechanisms, releasing of toxins, um, coughing, sneezing, vomiting, diarrhea, are also triggered via the um, recognition of allergens. So we have to talk about how IgE normally works and mast cells and basophils and eosinophils normally work, and then we will see how that they are um, accidentally triggered in allergic reactions, specifically type 1.